So hello guys, it's Sender here again. So first of all, what I would like to say is that I'm sorry I haven't been able to do so many YouTube videos recently. There's always like different projects that I'm more involved with. And it always depends on any given time what I'm putting more time into. But definitely now I'm planning on putting again more effort to YouTube, more time to YouTube. So I'd say, except one video per week from me. Okay, I'll try to make these type of videos, a bit of guide content and so on once a week. Uh, for now, my plan is to basically have Wednesday as the day when I release videos. But enough of that. What we have today is about one mode that I'm sure a lot of people have been seeing a lot about. It. Like, if you go to Twitch, if you watch a streamer that's around at the top count, like competitive streamer, it's not probably unlikely for you to see the them scream. Splat zones. There are several teams that only scream splat zones or heavily prefer to scream splat zones. For example, I know STD Axis, a team that everyone's familiar with, and they pretty much exclusively scream splat zones. There are so many Japanese teams exclusively scream splat zones, more or less. Uh, European teams as well. So basically, what I want to do in this video is kind of like talk about why is splat zones in this kind of status, so to speak. Like, what's the explanation to this? And so, I'm gonna keep my thoughts on how Splat Zones is different from other modes. So, we have TC, I'm recording TC here. So, how, how is Splat Zones different from the other ranked modes, being Tower Control, Rainmaker, and Clamplets? So, first of all, I think historic reasons for Splat Zones is a big part of it. So, if you don't know, Splat Zones was the first ranked mode to be out in the game. So, when the game came out, we only had Tier 4. And then around 24 hours from release, we had Splat Zones as the first ranked mode, but that was the only ranked mode for a couple of weeks at least. And I think Splat Zones, it's fair to say it's the kind of, how would I say, the most fundamental form of Splatoon when it comes to uh, ranked modes. So for sure, therefore, is is still the most fundamental Splatoon mode for sure that like there's nothing else like this game was designed to be played like this like this was the first idea they had and everything else came afterwards but i think splat zones is like their idea of how to turn the four into something that's more competitive i guess because you know well therefore i covered it a couple times in this channel i don't think it's impossible to play competitively at all but definitely there's this aspect where towards the end of the match you have this 30 second that kind of decides the whole match right and in splat zones it's a bit different where you have to be holding around the middle of the map and uh, you have um, like everything you do throughout the game matters so basically that's the difference but still the basic concept of it is the same you cover the map and you earn points it's just the only difference is that you only cover the middle of the map in the four in addition, compared to the first of splat zones there's some map changes so we go came here to Selendorf and you can walk across the ceiling here right like this so there's several changes like this from the for going to splat zones one bigger example of being for example board there is these cards that go out, uh, like uh, there and back basically and it's a bit might be a bit casual i don't know how to say it a bit random at times but basically splat zones has everything like that removed so i think in a way splat zones is the most fundamental mode and uh, I think that's definitely one reason for it. Uh, second reason would be that, again going back to the double control example, since we have it uh, quite conveniently in rotation here. When you think about double control as a mode, like, okay, if we scream, scream double control, like, what's it gonna look like a normal competitive match in double control? I think pretty common thing to happen really is that you know, you play, you play your match, and one team gets a really good lead, it, can, it might be like they get a wipe and that's the first push. And they get the push all the way to... Let's say they only get all the way to one, okay? So they get all the way to one, and the opposite team is forced to go back from that. Well, even if there is a big power level difference, the game is still going to take the five minutes. And basically it's not going to be so interesting, I guess. One team is just gonna be defending and the other team is gonna be trying to do something but it's kinda hard because the other team is heavily defending and you know pushing to one is something that doesn't happen so often so it, kinda the match is already decided, people are just playing it out it's kinda like in football if it's 3-0 and you know the 
time is clicking down, then everyone's still playing, but like one team is already preparing to lose. So that's different from Splat Zones. I don't think there's any moment where you can like, like get relaxed and say, hey, well, you know, we, we have to lead to one. So now let's just defend and there's not like much that can go wrong. We have our special to defend their push and overall it's pretty easy game for us, but maybe a bit boring. But for Splat Zones, the thing is this, if you lose control of the middle, you can lose really fast. It doesn't matter what kind of lead you have, there's always a chance that you lose. And on the other hand, if there is a big power difference between the teams, the games can end really fast. So you don't have you don't have this boring period where you are defending the uh, the lead basically. In Splat Zones, if there's a power level difference, you are gonna end the mat match really fast. And I think many uh, teams enjoy this, as you can go through the maps faster. And on the other hand, you know if if, if you are clearly doing something that's not working out, you get the like right away you lose the match and you get to try again something different compared to some other modes. So I, I think definitely that's a big reason. On the other hand, like we talked earlier about the Japanese scene and how they play Splat Zones, I think this is like where it comes from. Like this is the origin, and you definitely can't ignore it. So in Japan, they be playing more about the other modes as well. But definitely when Western players play with Japan, then it's Spat Zones. It's definitely Spat Zones, it's not Clamp, it's just not any, anything else. So definitely if they have Koshien coming up, they're gonna play the F4. If they have something else coming up with all modes included, they probably play all other modes. But the default is Splat Zones, so hey, if you wanna scream against Japanese teams, then you're gonna prepare to play Splat Zones. It's not gonna be Clamp, it's not gonna be Double Control, it's gonna be Splat Zones. So definitely for many teams, that like screaming against Japanese feel like it brings you extra challenge or whatever uh, it's definitely gonna be Splat Zones so I, I guess that kind of carries over to Western as well I feel like teams are maybe most comfortable playing Splat Zones as that's the mode they practice the most and like in any game like when you're a competitive player the more you know a mode the more you can enjoy it right so for example Clamblets I can say right away that the reason many people don't enjoy is at all is because they don't know how to play it and you're not gonna enjoy something you don't know how to play okay i'm not like calling out there's no legitimate criticism against the mode that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that anything you are proficient that is gonna be more fun than something you just don't know what you're doing basically so for splat zones i think many teams have reached pretty good understanding of the mode and that naturally is gonna lead to a point where you are gonna be feeling like playing the mode more uh, one thing, I think I've talked about this before, but you can't really like understate it because it's definitely definitely the case is that I believe Splat Zones has the most amount of viable weapons. So I think when you look at the weapon viability overall in Splat it's Splatoon 2, it's pretty good I think. Like there's a lot of viable weapons, but still I'd say for Splat Zones specifically it, in Splatoon 1 and now in Splatoon 2 you have the most amount of viable weapons so if you look at like go to open rec and look at the top team screaming you see like crazy amount of weapons that are viable and you know of course this is hard to say for sure but at least the way I see it when they go to DC or Rainmaker it's less less variety so for Splatoon stuff like you know keeping the map control the ink in the zone is gonna be playing more of a role and you definitely see that you have more flexibility in your comms, whereas if you think about Rainmaker and DC, you're more or less throwing if you're not running Stingray, so that definitely limits limits your options there. When Splat Zones, I think most of the weapons, like you can you can run anything crazy in Splat Zones, like honestly, there's not many weapons you can't run. Like, there's, we can make pretty much everything work, one way or another, whereas in, think about something like, pretty much any weapon that like mainly excels at inking the ground well it's not gonna be great big for any of the other modes so take like neo splash show for example neo splash show weapon that really excels only at the ink the ground fast getting the bombers fast but that's not gonna be useful for tower control that's not gonna be really useful for clan blitz for rainmaker yeah kind of but still this is like very good example of of a weapon that's super strong for splat zones and then you go to other modes and it's pretty much non-existent and there's several examples like this. So for snipers, again, I think Splat Zones is where you get the most value of the weapon. Like those big stars are so important in Splat Zones. And yeah, I think that's that's definitely a big factor. And maybe one, one last factor that I would like to talk about just very shortly is that 
when you think about splat zones as a mode is that okay it teaches you very good fundamentals i think you need to be able to push with specials if you don't push with specials you automatically lose there's not like moments where you see raymaker i kept the raymaker i run and get some free free points like there's not in splat zones in splat zones okay there's maybe similar moments in that you can rush the zone by yourself get the zone cap and then reset the timer like that there's so stuff like that where the opponent misplays heavily but overall in splat zones you have to be able to play off team play you have to have good map control you have to go in with special if you don't you get destroyed very fast and i think what many people say about splat zones is that okay you know this mode is just camping it's so boring but i think this is pretty much what lower level splat zones games look like i'm not quite sure but i, I guess on lower level just to execrate this a bit is that okay when you gain control you just like shark here and when they come you like pop like you don't really try to push forward you content that saying at the zone and this is not really like what high level that zones maps look like in high level you see players pushing crazily like they push as far forward as they can so definitely that's what you know separates lower level and high level splat zones but that's just like coming back to the fundamentals like this is not the fundamental of the game that you definitely will be learning from splat zones you have to be able to force special if you don't that's very bad for you in tc ray make a clamplets maybe less so but okay just to wrap this video up i'm sure i've been talking some amount already good amount so for me okay i, I still think we should play all modes i think tava control ray make a clamplets splat zones they all test different things so don't understand this video as me advocating for getting rid of other modes, that's not my opinion at all. But I was just trying to explain a bit like why high level players prefer splat zones sometimes. For me it kind of depends on my mood. Okay, sometimes I'm more like, hey let's play all modes. And definitely if you're practicing for a tournament coming up with all modes, then let's play all modes. But if it's kind of like in between, we don't really have a map list to practice, then I think splat zones is pretty good, especially if you're playing with the sub. Everyone has pretty good basic understanding of the mode, so it's pretty enjoyable to play, even with random people. But I still think we should play all four ranked modes, and uh, of course, coming back to my tier 4 videos, also tier 4, but okay, that's a bit unrealistic at the moment. But definitely I think we should play it in the tournament. I think my preferable... Basic, my preferable map list would be... Okay, Splat Zones is in every set. So, so there's no sets where there's no splat zones. Even it's best of three, there's no never like TC where you make a clamblet. Because of the reasons I talked earlier, I think splat zones is the definitive rank mode. But what I would do is that in every every set there is as much splat zones as there can be without it being possible for you to win the set with only winning splat zones. So in best of five there would be two splat zones, not more or not less. Best of three, one splat zones. Best of seven, three splat zones. And I think then you add the other modes there. I think that's the my preferable rule set that's realistic right now. And yeah, I hope this video was uh, useful in uh, teaching you what exactly is about splat zones that people find so appealing. And maybe you get some more understanding out of this. And yeah, should be more videos on Wednesdays. I think, yeah, you can expect more videos on Wednesdays, so look out for that. And yeah, really happy to be able to make some videos again, have some nice ideas coming up, so please look forward to those. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have comments, leave comments, and uh, see you guys next time.